Hi, this is Dr. Anthony Earl. We're back with you on the subject of fasting and prayer. And uh, I just want to just encourage you uh, to grow, to uh, cultivate your life, your spiritual growth, so that you uh, will discover uh, the victories and the joys that you have been looking uh, for in your walk in God. If you would just turn your Bibles with me to uh, the book of uh, Matthew, the Gospels of Matthew, chapter 17, and we will begin at verse 14. Matthew 17 and 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Now, this is really interesting. Because the point is not to humiliate or embarrass his disciples. The point is to help them to grow and to mature in him. And the Christian journey is about maturity. It's about growing up in God. God wants to, to elevate us. He wants to grow us up in him. And so this, this man who, who was hoping that the disciples could deal with his son's epileptic behavior, that his disciples could cast this spirit out, but they were unable to do so. So we can learn from this. We can learn that when we are faced with, with challenges that seem so too big for us, challenges that may appear to be overwhelming, we can learn. And so Jesus goes on and he says, bring him here. And in verse 18, Matthew 17, 18, Jesus rebuked the demon. So what do we see? Rebuking the demon. In other words, the boldness to stand up against the enemy. And I want to encourage you that when we learn uh, to add these principles of fasting and prayer to our lives, what it will do, it will give us uh, the strength, the, the ability, uh, the boldness to be able to rebuke devils and know that when you rebuke them, they have to flee. So Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. That very moment when Jesus rebuked the demon, the child was cured. I'm believing that as we uh, uh, continue our journey in the faith, as we begin to practice fasting and prayer in our lives, that we're going to come into new, amazing and wonderful experiences of casting devils out and seeing those, those demons flee at the very same hour we pray. Verse 19, then Jesus came to, uh, excuse me, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and, and said, why could we not cast it out? Can you imagine, just, just look at this narrative for a moment. The man asked the disciples to cast them out. So I could imagine, the scriptures are not giving us the particulars, but I could imagine the disciples trying to cast this spirit out. Nothing's happening. They're exhausted. Nothing happening. And then finally Jesus appears and the man says to Jesus, your disciples couldn't cast them out. And then Jesus deals with what? Their unbelief. So what do we discover? Fasting increases your capacity to believe. Say that with me. Fasting increases my capacity to believe. And so he goes on. And this is what the scripture says. 
So Jesus said to them in response to their inquiry, why couldn't we do it? I mean, they're, 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 they're defeated. I mean, I'm sure that after trying to cast them out and it's not happening, they're discouraged. So they're inquiring and asking, why couldn't we do it? And this is what Jesus teaches us today. Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, go here and go there, and nothing will be impossible <laughs> for you. Nothing will be impossible. So when we learn to discipline ourselves, when we grow in faith, when we study the word of God, when we pray, when we fast, when we seek the face of God, we can say to this mountain. So the f disciples' issue was they didn't have the belief to cast them out. I've seen that many times in church. I've seen people, I've seen people go through uh, just the motions of trying to cast out spirits, but having no success because they are not disciplined. They don't have uh, the faith. They have not spent time studying the word. They have not spent time fasting and praying, consecrating their lives, setting their lives aside to seek God for more of his power, more of his anointing. And so they just go through exercises and, 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 and no one is delivered. But in this new day, in this new season, I believe that there will be those who will seek God in ways that we have not sought him before. There will be those who will lay down their lives, who will turn down their plates, who will fast and, and pray and believe God for more faith and more power and more anointing. And they will be the ones that will see the type of results that this father was looking for from the disciples. Verse 21, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Let's go back to Leviticus. On, on our last teaching, we showed you in Leviticus 16, 29. But this time, we want to take a look at Leviticus. And I want to show you in another passage of Leviticus, uh, I believe uh, chapter 23. Uh, Chapter 20, 23, verse 26, Leviticus 23, 26. And it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of this seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. Now, <laughs> we've learned so much in the Old Testament about offerings and sacrifices and burnt offerings and peace offerings and sin offerings and grain offerings. We've learned so much. But then we discover in the New Testament, the writings of the Apostle Paul, that God is not really interested in burnt offerings and sacrifices. He's interested in our, in our obedience, that our obedience is better than sacrifice. Then why did he have us do that? Why did he have Israel present daily sacrifices? The reason why is because he wanted their obedience. He gave them instructions and he expected them to follow those instructions to the letter. So what can we really learn from these principles? The principles are that God establishes systems and those systems are the tools that he gives to us to get amazing results, to have powerful results in him. 
So what does that mean? It means that in this text, it's a day of atonement. Atonement is reconciling. Jesus was the atonement, the atoning sacrifice for us. Atonement means to have peace with God, is to be reconnected to God. So there are things that hinder us. There are things that interfere with our growth and our development in God. And as a result of those things uh, affecting our growth and development, what happens, we become burdened with problems. We become ensnared in traps. The scripture talks about the enemy being uh, scandalous. The word scandalous uh, is, the, is the word scandalon. It means the enemy trips us. He trips us up. He, he puts snares in our ways. He put traps in our ways to, to interfere with our growth and our development in God. And so God sets a system in place. And this is, the, this is the time where we're discovering. Yes, we're discovering huh, from the scriptures that now the institution of fasting is being established. Now let's go back to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Verse 5. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? You know, we can get so, so into tradition where we miss what God is actually trying to accomplish in our life. So instead of being reconciled back to the Father, instead of uh, growing in maturity, they practice fasting to afflict themselves. Fasting is not just for the purpose of afflictions. Affliction is, 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 is not the, the instrument to, to grow you and to mature you, but fasting is afflicting yourself because when you deny yourself food, when you deny yourself water, your body reacts to it. You have headaches, tummy aches, your bones ache because your, your body uh, uh, is saying starvation, starvation, warning, send signals, make them eat. But then you learn how to bring your body under the subjection of your spirit. And so Isaiah writes in verse six, is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to, to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him? and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning. The healing, your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. Wow, now we're beginning to see some things. Why fasting is important. Right away, what do we see? We see one, bonds of wickedness being loose Two, the undoing of heavy burdens three the oppressed being released into liberties and freedoms four that your yokes are being broken and destroyed five the sharing of your bread with those who are hungry the sharing of your faith encouraging others to walk this faith as you have walked it for years. Next, to see the naked and cover. Cover people, love them. Cover those who've made mistakes. Love covers a multitude of, of faults. Next, then your light shall break forth like the morning. The lamp of God becomes brighter. Fasting gives you oil for your lamps. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. 
And I shared on our first teaching that, that fasting helped me to overcome health challenges in my own personal life. Thank God that I've learned to live a fasted life. And your righteousness shall go before you. Right actions, right behavior. Your reputation precedes you. People recognize you as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a person of integrity, as a person of holiness, as a person of purity. Your righteousness goes before you. It precedes you. Next. Ah. Then, in verse 9, the glory, well, the ending of verse 8, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he shall say, here I am. That answers to prayers are now <laughs> increased because of your fasting. Because now you learn how to pray effectively. You learn how to seek God effectively. Verse 9. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst. Fasting stops you from being critical of others. Fasting stops you from being a fault finder, a backbiter, one who points the finger and accuses others. It, it prevents you from speaking evil of your neighbor. It changes your culture. It changes your nature. Verse 10, if you extend your soul to the hungry and the satisfy the afflicted, Ah, there go that word afflict again. Fasting, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. Sometimes there are um, the type of fastings that happen in our lives, not by our own personal choice, but it's this type of fasting that takes place in our lives because of illnesses or sickness or because of the lack of food. And those people too go through affliction. And now you come alongside and provide the nourishment and the food to them. The scripture says that you will receive light. Wow, light. Your light shall dawn in the darkness, and the darkness shall be as the noonday. In other words, when you begin to embrace the kingdom of God in this type of measure, you begin to see God lighting up your life, lighting your path. God begins to show you some amazing things. God begins to reveal to you uh, a bright future in your life. Verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul and draw and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water who waters do not fail. Wow. Fasting will do this? Yes, it will. The scripture talks about being like trees planted by the rivers of water being healthy and flourishing and leaves will not wither. Fruits, ha, ah, the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairers of the breach the restorers of streets to dwell in. What great news. This is exciting news because now we're beginning to see some results. God is raising a church 
that will transform societies. God is raising a church that will impact nations. God is raising a church that will raise up new leaders who will be fair and just and equitable. God is raising up a church that is not religious in its nature, that imposes certain behavior on people. He's raising up a church that will not put burdens, heavy burdens on people that the leaders themselves will not carry. He's raising up a church that is powerful and vivacious. He's raising up a church that will once again experience the miracles, the same miracles that were experienced in the Gospels, the same where blind eyes were open, deaf ears were unstopped. The same God who, who was willing to heal those who were lame. I pray right now, those who are listening, those who are watching right now, you're sitting there and you're, need, you're in need of a healing. God will deliver you right now. God will deliver you. Just cry out to him and he will answer you. I challenge you. I challenge you today. Ask God to show you how to fast, to show you how to pray. I challenge you. I challenge you. If you hunger and you thirst for righteousness, he will fill you. This is a life that I've learned. This year, I'll celebrate 40 years walking with God. And it started off with the fasting and the praying. And over the years, I've learned to fast one day. I've learned to fast three days. I've learned to fast seven days, 21 days, 30 days, and 40 days. Many times without food, just a little water. No juices, no coffee, but just fast. And I've had some amazing experiences in God. I want to encourage you to learn to walk with God that way. Now, for those of you who have medical issues, don't just try to do this without consulting your physician because we don't want you to get yourself in trouble. If you're a senior, pretty old, don't try to fast 40 days. As a young man, it was easy to do. As I'm getting older, I realize that now I have to use wisdom and seeking God and asking God for counsel and guidance. But everyone can fast at least one day. Everyone can. Many of you can fast for three days or seven days or 21 days. I encourage you to seek God as to how long you can fast. Instead of you announcing, I'm going to fast a day or two days or three days, ask God to take you on a journey. God is a God who loves leading his people. He led his son. In the scriptures, we see God led Moses to the mountain and he spent 40 days. He didn't know he was going to be there for 40 days. And the scripture says that he fellowship with God 40 days. And when he came down, his face was lit up. Oh, man. Can you imagine your face being so bright where you have to put a veil, a covering over your face because the people could not take it? And then we see Elijah, Elijah being led by the Spirit of God where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. We see it throughout scripture. Esther being challenged. She says, let us fast for three days and then I'm going before the king and I'm going to share with the king what the enemies are planning against Israel. Daniel fasted. 21 days, no uh, pleasant food. And then the angels of the Lord showed up and said, Daniel, we have heard your prayers for the last 21 days, but we were fighting resistance in the heavens. And then in the gospel, we see our Lord being led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. 
And this is what is so interesting. And it bless, blesses me even now. The scripture says that Jesus afterwards was ministered to by angels. I believe that when we practice this discipline of what God has established for us, the angels of the Lord will come and minister to us. Let us pray. Father, bless the people. God, help them to understand the importance of fasting and prayer. We pray, O oh God, that they will comprehend what we have taught these past sessions. We pray that, Lord, they will have amazing breakthroughs in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. This is Dr. Anthony Earl again. And until next time, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you strength. Amen. <laughs>